Okay, my outstanding friends, this is a shocker for sure. Now, everybody's seen this. It's, the, it's gone viral. This angel that was discovered in Russia a while back, a month or two ago. And it's anatomically flawless. Now, I study mud fossils. I discovered mud fossils, and I studied them for the last 12 years, and I understand the changes that can happen to bodily tissue and even fabrics. Now, I want to show you something that was written in history about how these creatures could be turned to stone. And they were doing this regularly. This, they're all over the place, and everybody thinks they were just statues. They're not just statues from antiquity. Many of them are similar to this, appear to have been immortalized in stone. Now, let me just, we'll come back to this in a minute. Everybody's seen this, so there's really not too much to show you other than a very slow motion rollout of what it looks like and I'll try to explain the little bits and pieces that I do understand but I it, it, for all practical effect to me it looks legitimate again I haven't touched it I don't I don't know anything about this specific thing other than what is seen here and you will see but I do know about the ancient texts and I do know that flesh can turn to stone very easily okay there's very very little on this online other than this one little clip it goes for about a minute and I've taken every second of it and looked at it as closely as I can look at it. there's nothing here that I can dispute as being fake I do have a concern about where it's sitting on the ground but I see everything around it appears to have been from very similar when I say I, I really don't have any concerns to be perfectly honest with you I'm trying to find something that I can dispute and I can't find anything and I know as I would have shown you or will show you that it was all written about no question whatsoever they wrote about these things happen and things turn into stone these creatures and I can see they are stone no question whatsoever look at this this guy I, I've shown this a hundred times this guy's leg, that's the tendon that runs down the leg. That's the blood at the bottom of his leg. This is literally his kneecap. This is the fleshy area. It turns to stone. The fleshy part turns to stone. Blood and, and the real, real fluidy, wetty, wet stuff doesn't. It stays inside. And it, it will leak out eventually, just like this one is. This is as strange as it gets, and, and I am just as baffled as anybody. But here's the kind of thing if, that uh, Ovid was talking about. Look at this. What the hell is that? It's something with, like, spongy-looking legs on it and a dragon-looking face and growing out of a guy or part of him or wrapped around. I don't have any idea what that is. And this guy is saying, what did you do to me? Look at him. Look at his face. And that's what they said. And they were amazed when this stuff happened to them. Okay, I've studied this very, very well. This is Ovid, who wrote Metamorphosis, about the turn of the millennia, right around the time of Christ and um, Julius Caesar. Now, he wrote everything that had been compiled, framework comprising over 250 myths, they called them, 15 books, 11,995 lines of text about what our ancient past really was, passed down from the Greeks to the Romans, da -da 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 -da, down to where we get to Christ. This, this was a very interesting time because there was still understanding of what the ancient past was and there was a lot of discussion about where the future of the world would go to. And that is exactly what's going on today. Now, these are, he wrote books after books after books, and he started right with the creation, the ages of mankind, the flood, Deucalion, who was Noah, Pyra, who was Noah's wife, and then down through all of the other monsters and giants and Hercules and all everywhere. Now, he starts out right at the very first words, 
He says, I intend to speak of forms changed into new entities. Now listen to this. Accompanying this theme is often violence inflicted upon a victim whose transformation becomes part of the natural landscape. <laughs> now listen to this. There's a great variety among the types of transformations that take place, from humans to trans to in innate objects like the river, constellations, turn them into animals, from forms like ants and fungi into mushrooms and humans and sexes and hyenas and colors and pebbles. It, you could, they could do anything with anything. So they could easily transform people into stone. They, they used to call them alchemy and alchemists, and, and they knew how to just, just like that, and the, the, the guy would turn absolutely solidly to stone. Now, we're going to read about Medusa and the, the head and the Gorgon and all that stuff, turning these people to stone, because th this is very well written about in Metamorphosis. Now let's take a look at that. All right, so this is Metamorphosis. Now this is, it comes down and down and down about the fights. Everything's fighting and killing and death and slaughter. Now we get down to where we're talking about Phineas. Now, Phineas did not dare to fight hand-to-hand -hand with his enemy. He threw his spear, which felled Idas by mistake, who, though unavailingly, had no part in the fight and was a follower of neither side. He, he looking fiercely at Phineas, said, Since I have been forced to take part, then Phineas acknowledge the enemy you have made me and repay me wound for wound. So he's going to fight back. He was about to hurl back the javelin he had pulled from his body when he collapsed, dying, his limbs drained of blood. So that guy's gone. Then Hudites, the greatest of the Ethiopians next to the king, was killed by the, somebody else's sword. Hypus struck Pronifenor and Leucides struck Hypatus on one very old man was there who held up justice and feared the gods. Now, they are talking about the gods a lot. He stepped forward, and since his age prevented him fighting, he war warred in words, cursing their sinful weapons. Oh, losers! <laughs> Chromis decapitated him with his sword as he clung to the altar with trembling hands, and the head fell straight on the hearth, and there the half-living tongue still uttered imperceptibles, <laughs> and its life expired in the midst of the flames. This is just insane stuff. And it goes on and on about fighting and fighting and fighting and killing, and fell dead to the ground, and da 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 on and on. This, now we're going to get down to the, the Gorgon's head. Well, where are we here now? Let's see. Hold on. Let me get straightened out here. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to read. This freaks me out. It's just it's unbelievable. All right, so the guy's got his hand was stuck through. While Fortune aided his hand, Perseus killed Clitius and Clenus, born of one mother with different wounds. An aspen sphere from his strong arm went through both Clitus' thighs, while Clenus' jaw bit on a <laughs> javelin. This is, this is insane stuff. Mendesian Calorio was killed. Astrus of unknown father and Syrian mother, Athion, once skilled in telling the future, now deceived by lack of foresight. Throtius, the armor bearer of the king, and Edris, Ed notorious for murdering his own father. Yikes! <laughs> now, now it gets really cool when you hear this. This is, of course, book five, and this is the 144 to 199. Perseus uses the Gorgon's head. So now we're coming into this. This is, I don't know how to say it. It's just beyond what the normal human mind can even conceive of. It says, there is yet more to be done. Despite what he has endured, the purpose of all is to overwhelm this one man. They got like 400 guys, I think, after this one guy. The bands of conspirators opposing him are on all sides in a cause opposed to justice. Right, so they, they were doing bad things, opposing justice and good faith. His father, with helpless loyalty 
and his new bride and her mother support him to the best of their abilities, filling the palace with their cries. But the clash of weapons and the groans of the fallen drown them out, and at the same time, Bologna, goddess of war, pollutes the drenches and drenches the penates, the household gods, with blood and stirs renewed conflict. Now, here we go. Phineas and a thousand followers of Phineas surrounded the one man, spears to the right of him, spears to the left of him, fly thicker than winter hail past his eyes and ears. He sets his back and shoulders against a massive stone column. Now, just picture this in your mind. Here he is, he's trying to kill him like crazy. A thousand guys. And he's standing there against a stone column, protecting his big behind him. So he turns towards his opposing crowd of men and withstands their threat. The Conian Malupur presses him on the left, and on the right, Ethman and Nubatrian, like a tiger goaded by hunger that hears the bellowing of two herds of cattle in separate valleys. Boy, they had some, some flowery words. So he hears the bellowing of cattle in two separate valleys, does not know which it would rather rush at, fired up to rush at either. So Perseus hesitates whether to strike to the right or to the left. He drives Mopius off, piercing him with a wound to the leg, and is content to let him go. Get out of here. But Ethman allows him no time, and raging and eager to give him a wound high on the neck, flails at him incautiously and violently. So he just, and he just went out of control. He fractures his sword because he struck it on the extreme edge of the column. The blade is detached and fixes itself. It gouges him in its owner's throat. So he cuts his throat. But it, the wound is, it gives him is not serious enough to cause death. But as he stands there quivering and uselessly stretching out his defenseless arms, Perseus stabs him with Clinian Mercury's curved sword. So that guy's gone. Now, when Perpius, per Perseus saw, indeed, that his efforts would succumb to the weight of numbers, so he knows he's, he, he's not going to be able to withstand all these guys. He said, since you plan it like this, I will ask help of the enemy. If there are any friends here, turn your face away. And he held up the Gorgon's head. <laughs> Find others who might be worried by your marvel, said Thysculus, who was just laughing at it. Oh, big deal, this is nothing. But as he prepared to throw his deadly javelin, he was frozen like a marble statue. In the act, Empix, next to him, thrust his sword straight at the heart of the courageous descendant of Lycinius, and in thrusting, his right hand stiffened without movement, this way of that. But Nihilus, who falsely claimed that he was born of the Nile, with its seven mouths, his shield engraved with its seven streams, part gold, part silver, cried, Perseus, see the sources of my people? It will be a great consolation to you to take with you in death to the silent shadows the knowledge of having fallen to so noble a man. The last echo of his voice was cut off in mid-flight, and you might believe his mouth still wished to speak, though it was no longer <laughs> pervious to words. He turned to stone and said, ah! That's it. <laughs> this is so far beyond, it's unbelievable. Eric's rebuked them, saying, Lack of courage, not the power of the Gorgon, freezes you. Rush in with me and knock this youth and his magic weapon to the ground. He had started his rush, but the floor held his feet fast, and there he stayed, unmoving stone, a full, fully armored statue. This is the key, a fully armored statue. They don't turn naked. Everything goes to stone. Now listen to this. Phineas is turned to stone. They all deserve the punishment they suffered, except one of Perseus's warriors. While he was fighting on his side, 
Acontius saw the gorgon's head and took the shape of hardened stone. Astagius struck him with his long sword, thinking he was still alive, and the blade gave a high-pitched ringing noise, <laughs> Ping! while Astagius stood there amazed. The same power transformed him, and he remained there with a wondering look on his marble face. It would take a long time to tell the names of the middle ranks of men. Two hundred bodies survived the fight. Two hundred bodies were turned to stone at the sight of the Gorgon's head. This is how they turned him to stone. Now, how it happened, I don't know. I can't, I'm, for the life of me, I can't imagine looking at something and, and that would cause you to turn to stone. Somehow that thing is... Something was coming out of it. Now, the ones, these guys that were next to the statue said they can feel a, some kind of presence. They can feel some kind of energy. And don't forget, this is Ovid again. There's a great variety among the types of transformations that take place. Like I told you before, they can go from any kind of object to any kind of other object. They own matter. They're the gods, apparently, of some godly way. You know, I, I, when I say gods, I, this is very, very, very confusing at the moment. We know there was what I would consider to be a group of creatures that had very similar capabilities. Obviously, there had to be one supreme god who was God Almighty, and he was in control, and these guys suffered the consequences of going against God, apparently. And then all this kind of crazy stuff happened. It's just, and it, nobody's ever even considered this stuff to be worthy of, of investigating. And if I hadn't discovered the mud fossils, I would think this was just hilarious. And it is not. You see this? And this, I'm telling you, as far as I can determine, that was a living creature at one time. I've looked at it very carefully. The blood running out of his leg and all of this different discoloration, the kale and clays of the face, different than, than the rest. He's strangling a little dragon here. They did this and they made these for sculptures. That's what Avin and all of the rest of them said. They were, they were just crazy creatures doing crazy things you know I, I, that's all I can say as far as I'm concerned that's pretty crazy as far as I'm, people around me don't do that kind of stuff I've never seen anybody I mean you know what I'm saying it's just it's insane that's why nobody's ever even considered to look at it and they still won't consider to look at it the, the more educated they are the less likely it is that they can conceive of this being reality, even though the reality is smashed into their faces. Okay, this is from a one-minute video from whoever that, however you pronounce it, I can't, and it's um, comments are turned off. And this is a month ago, he put this up, and this is as close to the detail as I can find about this statue. Now, watch this. As it comes around, this appears, well, it's obviously a different, a different material than the clothing and the, all that stuff. Now, as we come around here, let me just come up closer, as close as I can get. I like feathers. <laughs> I understand feathers. And they have a lot of layering. Now... I can see, uh, you know, the thing is, I can't get close enough to really tell the detail, detail, but as best I can watch, you can do it, watch, I have this a real slow speed, I'm going to stop, 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 you see this here, that's, that looks like the edges of the feathers to me, and then I can see layering in here, which you see the little layering in there? That's, that's exactly what you're going to see if that was a wing. And it's some kind of a different material. Now, how it fuses into the body, I'm not 100% sure. But I can tell you what, as far as I'm concerned, that would fit the profile. Now, it's coming out of here between this fabric stuff. It's like wrapped over it, and then it comes in between the back. Now, you see here again? This is, this is, 
this is like this stuff here. Look, it's like this flapped over that. I think. That's all I can say. It has it has some look to it. All right, now let's go. And there's the wing, and you can see they're sort of wrapped over the little flappy pieces. Now, here's on the back. Because the lighting's terrible. But well, let me go a little further here. All right, now watch this. All right, here we are in the back. He's got some kind of a cape on that comes around and sort of obscures wherever this locked in. But I'm going to tell you what, as far as I'm concerned, that's feather. It's something like that. It's quite obviously not anything like the rest of the statue. Now, how it sits on the ground is one thing that I'd like to understand. You know, it's, it's, I mean, they didn't dig around it and it's up here. They must have taken it out and put it down. And I think that's what did happen. But you can see all here, this is very similar to what I showed you on those other guys um, that were, there were, there were statues on the top of the surface of the earth. Now, this might have been on the top of the surface of the earth and all this stuff collected at one time and, and then there was a huge flood and, and a mud submerged in mud or whatnot. I don't know. The, 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 the um, shield is obviously a different material. This is, this is um, quite likely totally authentic as far as I'm concerned. I can't see anything that I can can put my finger on that says it's not real. And I can see a ton of stuff that says it looks damn real. Damn real. Now I'd love to be able to be up and touch it and, and, and look at it close and put a little microscope here and there. But boy I'll tell you that thing does look real now. I don't know and then we come to the deal about the Euphrates River and the four angels that were buried there and when the Euphrates dries up they'll be released which is the next video I'm going to do. Now what I'm going to ask you to do is to contact people you know. Just say look we've got to stop and start thinking about this a little more. I, and again I shake everybody's belief system but that is the understanding of reality is to shake your belief system so that you're not just accepting what somebody told you to read. And that's what's happening with the academic arena. You see, don't they, oh, this guy's crazy, it's all nonsense, it's, it's impossible, I uh, forget him. And that's what's been going on for the last 12 years. And that is also part of what was written. All of this is almost word for word out of the ancient text and out of all of them. I'm not talking about just the Bible. I'm talking about out of Ovid, out of Hesiod, out of Herodotus, out of Plutarch and Plato and every single other one of them. Ovid was the biggest writer in history back then. He, his book, Metamorphosis, was as well seen as the biblical textures. And it was up until not long ago, until Darwin and all the rest of them came in. And said, oh, that's all. That's all. Forget all this. That you guys, people are crazy. Well, no. And I have shown in a million ways that all of this stuff was rooted in truth. Now, if you can't accept truth, you in the wrong place.